Hi and welcome. This is Rich Dahman, Superintendent with Winona Area Public Schools, and I want to welcome you to another, another edition of Making the Grade. And I want to welcome both Ethan Larson and Jeremy Graves, and welcome to Making the Grade. Can the two of you tell, a little, tell the audience a little bit about yourselves? Uh, sure, go ahead, Ethan. Uh, I'm Ethan Larson. I'm a senior at Winona Senior High School, and I'm really interested in filmmaking. So, uh, I'm Jeremy Graves. Um, I'm a tech integrationist uh, for the school district, uh, primarily at the high school. Wonderful. Well, again, welcome to both of you. Uh, Jeremy, can you tell a little bit about how the video production class got started? We're going to talk about the video production class and the Tech Nest and some things that are going on at Winona Senior High School. Yeah. yeah you may, why don't we start by having you share some things about how that video production class got rolling? Sure. Uh, about three years ago, uh, our business teacher at the high school, Ron Aspinson, um, started to look into creating some type of video production class to offer at the school. and. I went around and did some research and uh, visited several uh, other school districts uh, in and around the area that are doing something similar to this and kind of put this framework together. Um, it ran for a year and then just didn't get enough buy-in. I don't know if we just didn't uh, promote it enough or what, but uh, we started it back up here and uh, kind of between her and I, uh, we have uh, kind of kicked it off in a little different manner right now uh, to where it's not a fixed class, but an independent study for the students like Ethan. Now, are there some, and this is a question for both of you, are there, is there some overlap in the, the students who are involved in the video production class and the technist students, and, and how do those two groups interact and, and work together? A little bit, yeah, because we do uh, screenings of our videos every Friday, and uh, the technist kids come in and kind of help us out with critiquing and setting up all the stuff. Okay. Yeah, and Ethan is a part of the Tech Nest, and it's where he started with me. Um, he has a passion for film, and it was uh, he was natural for him to kind of be a part of the video production. And Taylor Stanislawski, his kind of partner in crime, and okay. is also very talented. And uh, they are really a point and a lead for me uh, for that independent study hour and for those students. They are uh, uh, student leaders for, for that class. Awesome. It's, it's, it's vitally important that we have not only students involved in the program and, and learning those skills, but learning those leadership skills and, and that the ability to work with others. So that's great. Uh, Ethan, do you want to share a little bit about how you got interested in film and, and making videos? What led uh, to that? Yeah, well, it was kind of recently. Uh, I think I saw the movie Interstellar and that really inspired me. And after that, uh, like whenever I would go on like a family vacation or something, I would take whatever camera I had at the time and kind of made a film out of that. And then eventually it just got more and more uh, prominent in my life and I, I started buying cameras and getting really into it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that something that you might want to pursue after high school? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sure. Oh, excellent. Um, Ethan, share a little bit more about your role in the, in the Tech Nest and, and ways that that fits with the things that you like to do in video production. Yeah, well, I, I do the main stuff. I help out with uh, Chromebook issues and whatnot, but uh, usually I'm making videos, and that's uh, whether it be PSAs or videos for the teachers and stuff describing whatever. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much what I do. Excellent. Yeah. Jeremy, anything that you want to add on? Yeah, I mean, uh, the Tech Nest is very diverse. We have a lot of um, students who have different abilities, and it is nice to have somebody like Ethan um, that has, he's quite frankly, he's more uh, in tune to what uh, video production is than probably what than, than I am. Yeah. Um, so having him there and having him be a resource for the district and for um, our teachers and other students is, is great. So I, I, I hope we can find other students like him. Um, I, where he's a senior and man, we are gonna miss him next year. Is there a grade level that students are, that, that, that both the video production class and the tech nest is open to certain grades or how do, how do students, if they're thinking about being involved, yeah. how do they follow up on that? Absolutely, yeah. Um, ninth grade students uh, can be a part of the video production. We had a few the first semester. Um, ideally, I think it's going to be probably the 10th, 11th, and 12th grade just because of our schedule and the nature of the freedom of electives. Um, but it, uh, it'll, it's open to everybody. Okay, excellent. And, and I know that uh, 
Ethan, one of the things that you've done that you should be very proud of is 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 put together a documentary for the Frozen River Film Fest, and and that's and exciting. I think people would love to hear more about that. Why don't you share share yeah, some things about that? I think uh, Mr. Graves contacted Mr. Reister, and he's on the board of the Frozen River Film Festival, and then. They came in and kind of talked to us about hopefully making a, a video about the festival going around. And uh, we kind of interviewed some of the filmmakers that were there and just kind of like I, I managed to keep my own style and kind of mm -hmm. do my own thing. But yeah, I think it turned out pretty well. Yeah. Uh, there, yes, uh, it's talking with Mr. Reister, Jed Reister. He's on the board mm -hmm. of the Frozen River Film Festival and was a big part of bringing this uh, to our school. Uh, but we, they, they were looking to get and promote student uh, engagement within within the community. So it was a natural place to start with this class. And knowing that I had somebody like Ethan and Taylor, and um, we kind of tried to work something out to where they could actually create a, uh, a documentary for them. And it's going to be a promotional piece, I think, that okay. Frozen River Film is going to use. That's what uh, I was just going to ask, is how will, they, how will that get used? Do you have any more info on that? They're going to they're gonna use it to promote their film festival. Yeah, yeah. Well, right now, it's kind of kind of up for grabs to see what they do. Uh, yep. I'm just kind of waiting for them to respond to us. Excellent. Yeah. yeah, that's very impressive. So congratulations on, on, on doing that work. It's a great uh, partnership between our school district Absolutely. and the community, and it, and it really shows that the skills that our students are developing yeah, can sure. be used uh, uh, to benefit the community as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, along that same topic, both with a video production class, let's start with a video production class. I know that it's a great benefit to the students who are involved in it. How, how are other students or staff members or even the community as a whole, how do they benefit from, from that class? Um, I, I, I can take this one. Um, <laughs> For me, uh, there are going to be a couple of videos coming up that Ethan's going to be a part of um, that he's going to re you know, release that's going to help highlight um, maybe our town, uh, Winona, mm. the city of Winona. We're working on something right now. Um, and there will be hopefully something that will be for our school, too, um, the Winona Senior High School right now in particular. So uh, there have been other groups. Ethan made a PSA for uh, if you've been around town and you've seen the walk, uh, the flashing lights for the pedestrian oh, cross. Yeah. So Stop a Crash, Make It Flash uh, was a video that uh, Taylor and Ethan put together last year and okay. helped promote the use of those out in front of our own school and other parts of Winona. Excellent. Uh, anything that you want to add to that, Ethan, and, uh, and benefits to other students or things yeah, that are going yeah. on around well, the school? For the, I think more for the kids that are in it, uh, more, other than being just like a fun... Uh, an engaging class. I think it's it's very fun to uh, engage in such a art that's um, you know it's it's not really common for uh, schools to do uh, video production. Yeah. I think it's it's really, and I think videos are like kind of like the way of the future as far as far as art goes. Yeah. Do the do the technology skills that you have or that you gained uh, as you've gone through the school system do those help in the video production class? I'm sure that they do, but maybe describe some ways. That yeah, yeah, we learned a lot about. Uh, well, they have tripods and road mics and whatnot, so we we learned to use that uh, equipment for the videos. Mm -hmm. I think before I would just kind of take my camera and just shoot, but yeah. now we're kind of using. Do you also get into the production piece? Uh, yep, yeah, the, yeah. The, mm -hmm. the after the filming and, yep. and doing the production, is there some technology involved in that? Yeah, we have a movie maker studio at the school. Uh, we put them in all the computers. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I would also add in, Ethan spends a tremendous amount of time on his own time at home doing uh, many projects. He's putting together a small little piece right now for um, the group of students uh, at the high school that uh, did the student uh, walkout uh, the other week. Mm -hmm. So there's some video montaging going on, and he's going to put that together. And a lot of that stuff is done, not necessarily in school, but on his own time, um, using his own equipment as well. Yeah. And, um, so it, it's a, a, a nice resource to have for, uh, uh, and an ability for him uh, to, to be able to do that for us. That's excellent. Yeah. Uh, another question that I have is, is, is kind of related and around the TechNest, because I know that TechNest students really help out with district level things too, with, with recording different meetings and getting information out to the public about things that are going on within, within the school district. Uh, do you want to speak a little bit, to both of you or one or the other, about different ways that TechNest students are involved in other things uh, in, in the high school or in the district as a whole or in the community? Uh, yeah, we do some live streams, uh, band concerts, uh, basketball games, pretty much anything. Yep, yep. And we most recently this week, we uh, also live streamed um, the events uh, surrounding school closures and, and the budget uh, budget reduction uh, process that we're going through. So 
Um, and we're going to hopefully continue to do more. Uh, we're going to do the Special Olympics. We'll live stream that um, coming up here later this year. And there'll be next week we have the Madison Elementary uh, Music Concert yeah. that we'll be doing as well. Yeah, I think that's a great resource for our families uh, and community members as a whole because not everyone can make it to all of those events. Mm -hmm. If they have work schedules or, or transportation issues or whatever the situation is, they're not always able to attend uh, all of our events and having those things available on the website so that people can either watch the live stream or pull it up uh, when they do have the time is, is I think, a, a great benefit yeah. to folks. Everything will go to our, uh, the plan is for everything to be live streamed to our Facebook page, the district Facebook page. So we work with Katie Rudering quite a bit uh, to make sure that works where, uh, right and well and, and, and is out there. So. And maybe one last thing before we run out of time. I know that the foundation for Winona Area Public Schools oh. had, had uh, done some funding for a drone uh, that the Tech Nest has been using. Can you share some things? And, and I've, I've seen and heard that out and about, so, so yeah. people are using it. Can you share some different ways that that's been used? Um, part of what Ethan, uh, Ethan was working on um, for the video next week, uh, or from, from this past week for the walkout, is we use the drone to kind of capture uh, a different angle. Um, I think you will see the drone also as a, it can be a live stream angle for us uh, that we can pipe in through our equipment. So we're going to use that um, out at Paul Gill Field for the Special Olympics. You'll see mm -hmm. that as an awesome. aerial angle. Um, and then the, uh, one of the videos at the end of the year um, that uh, should be coming out um, is going to kind of be a little drone heavy, maybe with footage of Winona and getting a little different aspect. Um, so uh, should people should be looking forward to seeing that. I think in, in addition to providing that service for the people who watch the videos, I think it's a great opportunity for our students to have that background as they, as they move through high school and, and go to, to some type of post-secondary or into a career. Uh, that technology is, is being used more and more readily in, in different careers, so that background will really be valuable. The fastest so, growing yeah. career in the United States right now really? is a drone operator. Okay, excellent. I didn't yes. realize that. Yes. <laughs> the, uh, it, we just have a, a short amount of time left. Is there anything else that either of you would like to add uh, on the, the work that you're doing? You I'm good. Okay. I would say um, I would like to thank uh, our, the, the administration, or uh, mm -hmm. Kelly Halverson, Mark Anderson, uh, and those individuals who helped promote and empowered me to be able to go out and have a class like this. Um, without that ability to do that um, and have that backing from them and support, uh, and I'm talking true support, um, we wouldn't be able to have uh, classes like this or opportunities for Ethan to go out and do this stuff and I think that's really important and they deserve a little credit for that. Yeah, I think that's very much appreciated and those opportunities are important for kids, whether yeah. it's in this area or other areas. One of the things that we do really well is provide a lot of opportunities for students, so it's wonderful to hear uh, everything great that's going on with the video production class and with the Tech Nest. So thank you both for thank being you. with us today. Nice job, guys. Yeah, Elevate your HBC TV experience with the latest technology to hit your whole home entertainment system. Record up to six programs simultaneously and save up to 350 hours of your favorite shows. Pause a program you're watching in one room and pick right up where you left off in another. Video on demand, wireless set-top boxes and mobile device streaming, apps including Alexa, Netflix, YouTube, and more. Call 888-474-9995 to learn more or visit hbci.com forward slash elevate today. Perfect. Perfect. Getting the right look at the right price. Perfect. Is always in style at Cost Cutters. Located in the professional building in the Winona Mall, 507-454-6030. Hi, my name's Dave Adcock, one of your good friends here at HBC. I take great pride in serving our friends and neighbors in the community. And it's a privilege to also serve those who have served our country. When I deliver lunch to my friend Sill, a veteran of World War II, we not only share lunch, but we share time. And I really enjoy that connection to the community. Not only do we work here, we live here. And helping build our community is important to us because HBC is people in your community. Cost Cutters is your family's full service salon specializing in cuts, colors, and curls. Visit any one of our professional stylists today and get the look you want for less.
This is Rich Diamond, Superintendent with Winona Area Public Schools, and I want to thank you all for joining us with another edition of Making the Grade. With us today is Principal Andrea Eisner from Goodview Elementary School and kindergarten teacher Andy Norman. Welcome, and thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Can we start by having each of you share a little bit about yourselves with our audience? Sure. I'm Andrea Eisner. I'm the principal at Goodview and Madison Elementary School. I'm just finishing my second year in Winona Area Public Schools. And uh, I am Andy Norman. I am a kindergarten teacher at Goodview Elementary, and this will be my third year in the district. Yeah, and we're going to talk a little bit about kindergarten. Yeah, Sounds it's a, good. It's the, the current kindergarten class uh, closing up their, their, their year here in the next few months, and, mm -hmm. and we're starting to make plans for incoming kindergartners too. So maybe you can start by sharing a little bit about the standards uh, for incoming kindergartners. What are we looking for? And what standards should be mastered by the end? Of kindergarten. Yeah, so this is kind of a big question. <laughs> All right, um, so one of the biggest things we look for when kindergartners are coming in um, is really kind of more, uh, I would call them soft skills. So uh, can they dress themselves, uh, put on their shoes, put on their coats? Um, can they wait in line? Uh, can they take turns? Um, can they follow simple two step directions? Um, and then probably most importantly, um, can they use the restroom independently? That's a huge one. That's important. Uh, very important for kindergarten and kindergarten teachers. Um, and then more on the academic side, um, we would like them to be able to write their name. Um, doesn't have to be like, you know, five out of five on penmanship, but we would like them to be able to write their name. Um, if they can count to 10, that's a big plus. Um, and then also being able to um, ID um, or identify um, several of the letters in their name, um, especially. Uh, so yeah, if they come in with that, we're happy. We're super happy. Yeah, that's yeah. excellent. And then, and then, uh, maybe share a little bit more about when when the year is done. What are what do we expect them? Because that is an incredible year of growth. Yeah, Absolutely. and that's that's the biggest thing you'll see as a parent is when your child comes in the kindergarten. There is a huge growth spurt from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. Um, and it's actually really cool to see, and we love to see it as teachers. Um, so um, a big thing, um, we do expect um, our kindergartners to be reading. We want them to be beginning readers by the end of the year. Um, so that's a big step to take. Um, we also want them to be comfortable um, identifying numbers. Um, we usually say zero to 31, um, and then also counting, right? Counting forwards, counting backwards, um, for the similar set of numbers, um, along with, um, we would say, like beginner um, addition and subtraction skills. Like, that's a huge. Um, as far as more of those soft skills, like I say, a kindergarten's a lot more than just academics. Um, we have those social emotional skills. So, are they good team workers? Can they collaborate with other students? Um, can they uh, regulate themselves? Can they express themselves? Like if they're angry, can they use words to express themselves? Um, can they problem solve? Uh, do they have appropriate skills to deal with problems socially or academically? Um, those are huge. Uh, we would also look for school routines to be in place. You know, um, school-wide, what it's like in the lunchroom, walking through the hallways, walking in line things like that. Yeah, I, I've always been really impressed when I step into a kindergarten classroom in September mm -hmm. and then come back into that classroom in April and May and see the, the growth. And it's really a testament to the, to the work that our kindergarten teachers do yeah. uh, with our students. It's fun to see. Yeah. Um, it's vitally important that if students are going to be successful throughout uh, their, their time, all the way through graduation, it's vitally important that they get off to a good start in their schooling and that they don't fall behind in the skills that they need to be successful in, in, in following years or following classes. What are some support systems that we have in place that help students if they do struggle with some of the things that Andy identified? We are really fortunate at Winona Area Public Schools to have so many support systems. Um, a few that we have are we have guidance counselors at the elementary level and in the secondary level. Our guidance counselors um, are able to do guidance lessons within the classroom setting to talk about some socio-emotional type skills that we're working on. But then they also do meet with kids in small group. We have lots of friendship groups that work on kind of at need skills that come up. Um, we also have social workers. Um, two of our elementary schools have full-time social workers um, that work 
um, through a grant with our kiddos that might have some different needs that we need to meet in, during the school day. We have a partnership with Hiawatha Valley, um, and so we do have School Link, which provides us some therapy um, therapists to come into the school and work with them. Academically, we have a Title I program that works with our kids in reading and math um, in our primary grades. Reading Core is a Minnesota program that we offer to our kids as well. So lots of lots of different support services that we can to help our kids be successful. Yeah, that's excellent. It's great to hear. And I know that coordination of that whole system is vitally important Absolutely. too so that we can identify what students have those needs and make sure that we get that support to them as soon as possible. Yep. So thank you for, yep. for your work on that. Yep. Uh, another question is around technology, both for, for, yes. for staff members, for kindergarten teachers, what, what, how is technology used and what do the students do uh, with technology in kindergarten? Over. All right. Um, so uh, right now, um, what it would look like in the classroom is we have iPads. All right. We have um, roughly um, enough for like a small group. But we're not quite one to one on iPads yet. Um, but what it, it really helps me as a classroom teacher is I think technology is really, really good for addressing a wide range of skill sets that happen in your classroom. Um, and it kind of um, enables you to address specific student needs academically. Uh, and I also use it, technology, um, for a really strong parent-teacher communication and school-home connections. Um, and since most um, kindergarten groups these days, we like to do small group instruction, I also use it as um, accountability um, so if students are working independently, I'm able to kind of keep track of what they're doing. So it works great. Yeah, that's excellent. Yeah. Andrea, anything uh, well, and I wanted to add, add, in our fourth grade classrooms, we are one-to-one -one with Chromebooks. So mm -hmm. at the elementary level, you will see that. Next fall, we will be one-to-one -one for third grade. Um, so that ratio with our Chromebooks is very good. And our teachers use it for that very simple piece that um, Mr. Norman talked about, of be differentiating our instruction to meet the needs of our kids. Yeah, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and I, I don't know if we always think about the, the ability of technology for that communication piece, mm -hmm. too, yep. uh, whether it's sending home uh, just information about sure. that, that simple email, but also the ability to give video snippets yeah, of what's going right. on sure. in the class. And, and, and I think for a parent, that would be very comforting to be able to yeah. see, mm -hmm. yeah, like, here's, here's what my son or daughter is working on today. Yeah. That's wonderful. Um, Andy talked earlier about what we expect from students when they're finished with kindergarten, and I'm sure that there's stepping stones along the way. How do you measure, what, what types of measurement systems do you use to see if students are successful and, and are meeting the, the expectations that we have? I think in our classrooms we have those traditional assessments that we do. They might be mm -hmm. formative, might be summative, but we, I think we do lots of observational type assessments. Are our kids being problem solvers mm -hmm. or critical thinkers? Are they being a good friend? Do they know how to reach out to a friend to ask them to play on the playground? Um, are they making good decisions? So within the academic realm, we're also looking into those social emotional skills to assess them in that way yeah, as great. well. Excellent. And I know that we have kindergarten open houses yes. coming up. Yes. Uh, can you share some information sure. about open houses? We are really excited. The planning has started, but on Monday, April 23rd, from 5.30 to 7, all of our elementary schools will have a full open house. And it's not just for our kindergarten families. We'd love to see all our kindergarten incoming kindergarten families, but we welcome any family, K through fourth grade, to come through our buildings. Um, we'll have some fun activities going on to get to know, so parents and families can get to know our buildings, and we'll have staff there if we anybody has questions. A lot of our support services will be there as well to answer questions. So we just invite any family that wants to come to any of our elementary schools. We'll be welcoming welcoming them. Wonderful. And Andy, on mm -hmm. a teacher's viewpoint, what 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 is a teacher doing that evening at Open House? What so, are some of the things? Well, mostly we'll be found in our classrooms. All right, because we're um, kind of displaying our classrooms. We want the incoming kindergarten class to be comfortable with us, to kind of get those beginning, this is where we're going to go, this is where you'll be. Um, it's also a really good chance for us to um, kind of exhibit some projects um, that we may be working on in kindergarten. So it gets teachers, um, students, and parents like excited about coming to Goodview or excited about coming into kindergarten. Um, and then we're also just 
kind of informal asking, answering questions to parents. We're just there to be a resource and to get um, our, in, our incoming kindergartners excited about coming to Goodview. And I know that some incoming kindergartners have older siblings that mm -hmm. are already in the school oftentimes, but oftentimes it might be the, the first child from that family yeah. that, that's starting school. How do, how do parents enroll students for, for this coming school year? I think we have a pretty easy process um, online at the district website. We've got a kindergarten type link that takes them to the registration page. Transportation application is all in there if a parent is in need of transportation. Lots of questions can be answered and I always tell parents if you ever have a question that might not be answered on that or you want to talk to a personal person, please call any elementary school and they will help you through that. We do need at some point either scanned or brought into our buildings immunization records and a verification of birth. So those are two pieces of documents that we will need. Um, but we're willing at any school to help somebody with that. Even if you don't have access to a computer at home, you're welcome to come into our school buildings and we have access for you to help you through that process. That's excellent, yeah. yeah. it's it's. Uh, I know that we are uh, getting uh, on kind of the final stretch of the last yeah. couple months as, as we're approaching spring uh, of the school year. So the 17-18 the school year will be finishing up here and, and we're starting to make plans for next year. Uh, in closing, with, during the rest of this school year at, at, at Goodview Elementary, what are some things that, that not just kindergarten students but all students will be doing uh, over the next couple months? What are some things that are coming up? The spring semester is very busy. Yes, we do have advised. MCA testing for our third and fourth graders, so we will be approaching that here in April. But we like to get outside. Um, it's been beautiful weather and hopefully better weather on the way. So we like to tour our community in Goodview. We have lots of different community partnerships that our kids will be going to the park, to the fire station, all of those fun things, um, taking picnics, and then a lot of field trips happen in the spring. Yeah, and those opportunities to get out among, around the community sure. are great learning experiences yeah, for students, mm -hmm. too. Andy, anything else on that? Um, I'd just like to topic? add, um, yeah, we will be launching here towards the end of the year. We'll really be getting into, um, I can speak for myself, hopefully, and um, a lot of engineering projects we're trying to do in kindergarten. Hopefully getting outside, engineering projects outside would be fun. Um, and then just kind of end of the year summative wrap up projects will be coming up um, here in spring. Just kind of this is where we were at the beginning of the year and show how far we've come. So well, that's wonderful. If, yeah. you, if you think of it, invite me on one of those All days right. you're doing I will. one of those engineering yeah. projects. I would love to see our kindergartners yeah. at work. That would be great. So I want to thank Andrea and Andy for yeah. joining us on Making the Grade and for helping make Winona Area Public Schools a great place to learn and work. So thank you yeah, both thanks. very much.